augmented cognition. That's the answer. I want to say that right up front. So my whole talk, the thing to remember is augmented cognition because I think that's really the next X. That's the next brain is what I've kind of talked about. I'm going to share some of those thoughts with you today that will key into what I mean by augmented cognition. First of all, they mentioned I'm, I'm doing this. I, I've had a, a great time. And what I really want to see is how do we make people more prepared, more informed, more capable? I don't know about you, but I sometimes feel like uh, things haven't progressed as fast as I had wanted them to in terms of the, the future. When I was five years old, I was told by the time I was 25 there would be people on Mars, that we would have a colony on the moon. Seriously, this not popular, not science fiction, really believe this. When I was 25, it didn't really happen that way. Now, when I was 25, they said when you're 45, there'll be all this technology around. Now, we've gotten a little better. But we've kind of fallen into a little trap that we sometimes look around us. There is so much technology around us. You have a flat panel. I mean, how many computers do you carry on your body now? You, you have an iPhone, an Android tablet, your iPad, a Galaxy Samsung device, your laptop. You just walk around with more computational power than probably the, the space program had in the 60s. So I also hear that our refrigerators, our dry clean, you know, everything in your house is going to have computers in it. I don't have time to interact with every device that I, that's around me. I mean, I don't need to be, how do I interconnect things? How do I relate to it? Right now, I, I'm afraid, I'm very afraid when I walk around the streets of Philadelphia that I'm going to step into uh, traffic. I'm looking at my device. Um, sometimes, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling in different ways, you know, not only emotions, maybe I'm tired. Dylan Schmarrow this morning is not the same Dylan Schmarrow last night. Isn't the same Dylan Schmarrow after lunch. What's going on in our bodies is constantly changing. So how come all the technology around me doesn't know what's going on inside of me? We've spent a lot of time with our sensors and technology understanding what's going on in the world, what's going on in the physical space. Hey, there's a parking spot available over there. You can have your device tell you that. You can have a device tell you this is what's going on in the virtual space right now. There's so many of these things, but I'm overwhelmed with information. So, comes down to this. How can technology help us reap the rewards of the digital age without overwhelming us with complex systems and impossible interfaces? Or, if you like bumper stickers, how do we remove the burdens of technology? Because if you think about it, we're supposed to be empowered by all this technology, but in so many ways, it's a burden. It's a burden. I'm looking at it. I'm not ready for it. It, it chimes. You've got to make sure you turn your phone off when you're up here so that, you know, I don't want to get distracted. And this isn't a novel concept that wouldn't it be neat if a system knew what was going on inside of me, had some good behavior measures of what was going on around me, knew what was going on in the virtual world, the real world, knew all this, and then could intelligently adapt to me could support me, could make it seamless. So instead of human-computer interaction, which I love, we could have human-computer symbiosis, where it really is this completely transparent interaction. And it's, and it's this interaction not with the device, it's me doing what I need to do without the burdens of technology. So why can we do this now? What I'm sharing with you isn't radical. You know, people have thought of this well before me. Moore's Law, so we throw that up there. Moore's Law is up there. Moore's Law means, wow, anything's possible from a technology standpoint. They're making things faster and faster. We hear about how they're going to, you know, it, it's just all there. But that's also part of the problem. But it's also part of the solution. So a couple other things that I think really make what I'm going to share with you, augmented cognition, is there's two other big things that have happened. Why is it possible? Not only from the technology standpoint, but there's been the cognitive revolution, the decade of the brain, things like this suggests that now is a time that we can actually have human-computer symbiosis, that I can have that system, understand what I'm doing. So I wanna, I'm going to share with you two videos today, very short clips, just as a teaser to show that things are possible in what I'm talking about. Because really what I'm hoping to convey with this is a truly interactive symbiosis. The human-computer, it's a partnership. Again, I don't want to say where I'm walking around and interacting with technology all the time. I, I'm not suggesting that it's, you know, I'm, I'm having to deal with robots. I don't want to, I want to just live my life. 
but I want it to self-synchronize around me. Here's an example. Let's say you're a professor. I'm teaching a class. It's a big one, lots of people. I'm in, I'm in the groove. I'm, I'm really doing it. I'm communicating to the students one-on-one. -on -one. And my best friend that's known me for like 30 years, who happens to work there too, he comes in the back and he wants to have lunch after my class. Now, if in the middle of my speech he walks and goes, hey, Dylan, you want to have some pizza in about 10 minutes? You know, I might go, oh, what? Okay, yeah, 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 man, I want to have some pizza. Oh, shoot, what was I talking about? Because wasn't my brain just kind of, I was doing a verbal task right there. My brain was completely focused on that. Now, if my friends know me, now this is why I say he's known me for a long time, he knows how to interact with me and communicate with me. He can sense. Now, he can't necessarily read my mind, but if you had a good friend like that, he knows how to communicate. What if he walks in and just kind of goes, while I'm in the middle of talking, waves to me, kind of goes, 10 minutes, you know, kind of just holds his hands up, shows himself eating pizza, and I can just keep talking to everybody like I am now and just go, you know, like that. And he knows, okay, yep, I can do it. Or if I just go, oh, I can't do it. He hasn't interfered. Wow, what is that? It's almost as if he could read something going on in my brain and adapt to me in real time. So how do we do that for real? A little 10-second clip here. Computational partners activated. Neural interface engaged. Preferences imported. Okay, that's a little teaser, a little, a little bit longer movie, but I just showed you that because some people go, what, what is that? Well, you know, today, right now, how does my systems, whatever devices I have, the, you know, the, the infosphere around me, how does it know what's going on? Well, again, as I said earlier, there are sensors, devices everywhere that kind of keeps track where there's an open parking spot, what's if it's going to rain, all this other information. But I would kind of like something, and it doesn't have to be I'm walking around with a huge brain cap that looks like I'm in the hospital, but where it can sense that. Now, one important distinction here is right now it's really cool because in our society we're very excited about brain-computer interaction and brain-computer interfaces. However, a lot of that, or most of it, if not all of it, is focused on my brain is going to control this little car or my brain is going to control this cursor on the screen that goes up and down so we can play brain pong. So I'm going to play brain pong against you and we can just sit there and our brains can... Oh my goodness, why on earth, that's kind of cool, but why on earth would we do that? I can, play br I can play Pong really easy with my hand. I can drive a little toy car really easy. I have good monkey skills, you know, I'm good. I can do stuff. I don't have to be using my brain that does a lot of cognitive thought, that thinks to like do these very mundane things. Now, there might be examples we want that, certainly. Something like a prosthetic, I might need that. But hopefully for many people, we're all overwhelmed with the world going on around us. Wouldn't it be neat, though, is instead, if I had a device that could actually measure my cognitive state. Now, when I use that word, I'm a good Skinnerian. I want to be careful. Cognitive state, it's not a definitive thing. I'm, but, and I get in a lot of arguments with some friends, some good scientists say, Dylan, but you don't understand the fundamental mechanisms of the brain. We, you know, another hundred years of basic science. I want to go, man, we're always going to be studying the brain. We need to. It's phenomenal. But you know what? Sometimes I have enough information. I have enough information. Wouldn't it be neat? Did you know, like, you could put, like, a little sensor on my forehead, just kind of look here, and you could tell whether I'm having in verbal or spatial working memory. So think about those cartoons. Excuse me, my brain is full. We can build a gauge now that can tell you that your verbal working memory, it's full or it has capacity. Your spatial working memory is full or has capacity. We have that ability. Really what are we talking about there is closed loop systems using modern tools. Now again, you don't necessarily have to understand the fundamental mechanisms of the brain. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. My colleagues are, I support lots of basic science in the brain because it makes it easier. But we have things right now that can adapt. Not to play brain pong, not necessarily to play games, although they're fun, and it's not necessarily to even consciously train my brain so as I get older. Those are all good things. But imagine everybody, imagine, imagine this, if, uh, if you did have a little bit of problem with attention, did you know that I can actually build a gauge, and people have, that can detect whether you're paying attention? Not just general, so already people in education are starting to use this with people who have maybe some attentional problems, attentional challenges. 
But right now, it would be cool. So if my wife called me right now and said, hey, Dylan, make sure you pick up some milk on the way home tonight. And I go, okay, I got it, honey. My system would go, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, you do not got it. You did not encode that into your long-term memory. It did not signal the P300 response, bring home some milk. I go, oh, yeah, okay, I got it. Okay, you really do have it. But I want to tell you that because the technology exists today to do that. I mean, it even exists today that I can, with a nice camera, look into your eye. Look in the way, not just your eye direction, where you're looking, that's cool, but that's not what I'm talking about. The way your pupil is twitching, we can actually tell with fairly good accuracy if you're doing a math task or a verbal task in your brain. Wow, I want these devices to sense all of that. And really, here's just some examples. I mean, it's got to be down right now. The way you do it is we have some high-density EEG. So we have people who can make those and really understand it. But remember I said, I don't need to understand way too much. I want to have 21st century human computer interaction, 21st century human systems integration. I want 21st century human computer symbiosis, and I believe with augmented cognition we can do that. We can do that by sensing what's going on in the brain, the body, and you know what? I'm not discounting everything else. I want to include all that other stuff too. So really, what are we talking about? A closed loop system. A system so that those burdens of technology have been moved away that can really anticipate, predict, and augment. I honestly used to think, when I first started down this about a decade ago, the hard part was going to be detecting cognitive state, what these states mean. Turns out that's, it's a challenge, but there were some miracles. That's not the hard part. Mitigation, that's where we're at today. If there's one thing I can get people today to do after listening to this talk, would be to think about ways, if you can detect cognitive state, what would you do? What are the mitigations? You know, so let's say I'm looking at a map. I'm overwhelmed with information. There's critical things I have to do. Well, the system might be able to gray things out. You know, there's maybe the way it temporally sequences stuff. Those are mitigations, and we need those, and we need a lot of research. But I want you to understand that technology exists today to do a lot of this. Um, for my construct, and there's many constructs you could create, I wanted to build those simple gauges, a real simple gauge, high, medium, low, for Let's, let's say these bottlenecks. There's a lot of folks who believe, kind of, from a functional standpoint, we have bottlenecks in attention, executive function, working memory. Wouldn't you love all your computational systems, your refrigerator, to your iPhone, to your Samsung tablet? They all know, kind of, they have these, they understand what's getting in there. You also have a, a challenge of how much information, perception, how much you can kind of get into you at one time. Wouldn't it be nice, okay, Dylan, you're doing a verbal task right now, so I'm not going to interrupt you with that pizza example. I'm going to do a spatial thing, and I can, I can handle spatial and verbal at the same time. Now, it's really hard to handle verbal, verbal at the same time, really hard to handle spatial, spatial at the same time. So simple things like that. So i got a little bit longer of a clip here that I want to show of how it would actually work. And uh, it's not just about sensing. I just want to remind you that it's not just about sensing. We really have this time where it's also about what's going on outside and around the world. And what to do this, I think some of that sensing, before I show you the video, I want to say artificial intelligence, and I'm not just talking, I, I love all sorts of AI. I come from an AI world. I love swarms, I love chaos theory, I love ants, I love poly agents. But to really do a lot of this stuff, I need higher level cognitive architectures. Artificial intelligence, then I can actually go, I can ask the system, hey, what are you doing? And it can actually describe to me in a goal-oriented fashion what it's doing. Just talk to me, and those exist today. Great language uh, I'm very familiar with is SOAR, and uh, I think that might be one of the keys. So in the video, this is, there's a video that you can get uh, called Augmented Cognition. It's the futures of augmented cognition. And uh, Alex Singer put this together for me as the director, and I really wanted to convey what this would look like into the future. And this is his little glimpse, one minute of a 30-minute DVD movie you can download. Here it is. Claudia receives concurrent dual streams of information from two of her CMO teammates via the optic and auditory modalities. As before, each signal is received at the rear of the brain, then relayed through the thalamus. Once meaning is established, the signals travel back through the thalamus to the front of the brain, where the decision-making process occurs. Because Claudia is physically incapable of dealing with both streams of data at the same time, her stress levels begin to elevate and her performance suffers. Sensing these increased physiological measurements, the HMN begins to help reorder 
the appearance of data on Claudia's monitor. In this case, all text and auditory data was minimized, allowing her to focus her attention on the Kosaman street riots, resulting in faster decision-making and thereby increasing her overall performance. So, that might not be exactly what it looks like. Remember I said mitigation. You know, maybe I need some haptic stuff, how, how the computer deals with this information. But the goal today was to suggest to you the next brain is really augmented cognition coupled with this higher level cognitive architectures, and it's here. And I want to show you some metrics. These are some metrics right here. A decade ago, using some great, great things, we had a number of research teams prove that they could do in performance. Remember, what we cared about was performance, whatever somebody was doing. Working memory for that bottleneck, we got up to 642% improvement. Executive function, attention, sensory input. There's lots of published papers on this over the last 10 years, but I wanted to give a flavor that this exists and we've shown that it works. So, human-computer symbiosis is within our grasp. It's here. You know, I, we're, it's, it's coming whether we like it or not. We might get distracted with some games, brain pong. We might get distracted with some other applications, driving a cool little car you bought from the local uh, electronics store. But really what we need is I want to be able to walk down the street and, you know, I'm running a little bit early. I'm a little early for a very important meeting. My system knows from, you know, five years ago, my best friend recommended a, a great restaurant around the corner. My system knows that restaurant is open. That system knows that I haven't eaten. It knows that maybe my physiological body needs some food. More importantly, maybe it also knows that what I've been studying, because let's say I was studying for this meeting I have, that I have not had consolidation take place yet. There's this actual thing that happens in your brain. After like, you take in information, your brain has to digest it. So, wow, I've digested it, but it needs, you need some time to consolidate. You might go, hey, I know Dylan needs to consolidate. I know Dylan's uh, a little bit stressed out. I know Dylan's hungry. I remember there's a great restaurant somebody recommended five years ago. I recommended, huh, so mom and my sister can say, you're running early, why, why don't you go over here, there's nobody in the restaurant right now, get down, have a sandwich and a Coke, and uh, we'll be all set for your meeting. Now I can review some stuff. So it's here, that truly interactive symbiosis. There's a movie, The Future of Augmented Cognition, Alexander Singer, put it together for me, highly recommend it, showing you the future. One thing I was really proud of that I've tried to put together is a practitioner's guide, because a lot of times people thought, well, this is just like crazy futuristic stuff, no. You can do it now. We've had high school, college kids, you know, look at augmented cognition. Again, what do I mean? That's augmented cognition, that whole closed loop system. Even practitioner guides out there. Higher level cognitive architecture. So some really good ones out there, functional ones. I think SOAR is a great one. If we can couple that type of artificial intelligence, it's very goal directed, where you could actually have a nice dialogue. It knows how to use that cognitive information. Excellent. There's actually even professional conferences that are occurring in this area. Um, and I should say, sometimes we use words instead of augmented cognition. You might hear neural ergonomics. You might hear operational neuroscience. You know, any of the, you might hear brain this. Yes, there is not a common term that people have really adopted. I like augmented cognition, because really what am I trying to do is augment and perform that co cognition, which I hope does performance. So we have some good ones there. But we can really have this, really. The next brain, computer human symbiosis, via augmented cognition, maximize human performance, optimize that system, and I think we're just gonna need it. If you think about how many devices, how much sensing systems are out there, let's use it in our own self. And that's all I had today, and I wanted you to take away with it that that's real augmented cognition. Thank you very much.